Salo, or 121 Days of Sodom, is a 1975 film by Italian director Pier Pasolini. The film is a loose adaptation of Marquis de Sade's book of the same name. The Salo is about the excesses of three nobles who are celebrating the marriages of their daughter. <laughs> set in the Republic of Salo, a northern Italian fascist state set up after the Allied invasion of Italy. The movie is definitely a film with a message. Pasolini was an avowed communist, so it's no surprise that the movie mostly consists of rich aristocrats exploiting and abusing both sexually and physically, the young and the poor. It uses sex as an exploration of power, so it's kind of inherently about the R word. Unfortunately, the film is extremely graphic, so a lot of people never manage to finish it. It's based on a book by Marquis de Sade, who literally invented the term sadism. The film is really good though. Occasionally it fails to escape from its source material. The film was censored and cut as is usual for such graphic movies, especially in the 1970s. But surprisingly it was never met with the massive controversy. Part of this, I think, is that not many people saw it, and this was never going to be a mass appeal movie. In order to watch it, you had to make a conscious effort to go see it. So, when you make the choice to go see a movie based on Marquis de Sade, it's hard to get outraged, because, I mean, what else were you expecting? Tell from a picture in the paper! I can tell! New French Extremity is a film movement originating from France in the early 2000s. Pioneered by directors like Gaspar Noé and Pascal Logier, the movement emphasized body horror and sadism. On a note, early 2000s was big on body horror and sadism. I don't really know why exactly, but I mean, that's up to historians, I guess. So you have a film genre that's basically Cronenberg, but way more cruel about it. And I'll warn you again, these movies are not for the faint of heart. Do not watch them if you have trauma around physical or sexual abuse. They are... These movies are very much a logical expression of the id. So what you get is bloody horror, torture, violence, and scares. Feels like a genre of cinema invented by Alex DeLarge. Like, there is definitely appeal to enjoying something that you know you're not supposed to. It's, it's transgressive is my point, or at least that's how they feel. Alright, this is where I, I want to talk about high tension. What do horror films do? Like, really think about it. What are horror films meant to meant to say? Well, I posit that they tap into something inherent about the human experience. What scares us, what turns us on, the tiger hiding behind the bushes, the virus, and that steak you're about to eat. That'll wipe out your entire tribe. So horror films actually say a lot about the society that creates them, which is why different cultures and different countries have such vastly different types of horror. So if you'd ask me, what scares Westerners more than anything? I'd definitely answer sex. Sex is a huge subtext in any horror film. Uh, so anyway, High Tension is a film about a woman's repressed sexual desire and how that manifests as violent misogyny. That's right. I just said that being horny turned this lady into a dude. Oh wait, spoiler warning for High Tension. High Tension is a 2003 horror thriller based loosely and possibly illegally on Dean Koontz's Intensity. It follows the classic Final Girl slasher where an attractive young woman has to avoid getting killed by a scary dude. <clears throat> so Marie and Alex are two French ladies traveling to Alex's parents' house in the countryside. They're having a good time listening to early 2000s music on the radio. You can tell that Marie really wants to fuck Alex from the beginning and, you, and you're thinking... Oh, that'll be nice. The romance can blossom while fighting the killer. Nope, that's not what happens at all. Anyway. So the ladies arrive at the house, and what do you know? The parents are really nice. The family's really nice. 
And it's just a sweet little cottage, you know, a sweet little cottage in the middle of the countryside. So everyone's everyone's setting up the act one, uh, the act one status quo. This creepy guy is driving around throwing heads out of his truck. All right, so this is where the film gets a bit weird. So we skip a bunch of domestic bliss scenes, you know, blah, blah, blah. The family's nice, whatever. So everyone goes to sleep and Marie starts masturbating. Now this immediately brings the killer to the house. Yeah, I mean, this is subtle and it doesn't strike you until the big twist that this is intentional. I mean, pay attention to it because this is kind of what the film's about. France is not America. French, the French love sex, all right? Homosexuality has been around in French literature since In Search of Lost Time by Marcel Proust. I think the aversion and fear of sex comes from its status as an ad adaptation of intensity. Well, it's not an American movie. It's got some secondhand Americanness on it, if you get what I mean. In 2003, America still had the largest film market in the world. American films were omnipresent, available in every country on Earth. Bollywood was doing it, was kind of doing its own thing, and China was barely more than a decade removed from Deng Xiaoping's opening up of the Chinese economy. It would be almost another 10 years before Hollywood would start to seriously pursue the Chinese box office. What I think happened is that France's new, new extremity isn't trying to appeal to an American audience, but it's more a response to American cinema. So when you make a film, you have to watch other films to use as a reference. This creates what's called a cinematic vocabulary. This is a pretty ingrained part of the process, far more than mo I think most people realize. Directors will tell DOPs what to watch in order to give a sense of what they want the film to look like. So I, I find no reason to say that French directors wouldn't have watched Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street. In fact, I think it's almost absurd to insist otherwise. So what's my point? Did I have a point? I think so. I think I think it said film the filmmakers definitely watched American slasher films to use as references to the movie. And when you watch an American slasher, you start to internalize what American audiences like. But more importantly for horror, what they're scared of. The French directors, writers, and DOP saw the slashers of the late 70s and the cultural wasteland of the 90s American horror. And were like, you think that's extreme? I'll show you extreme. And proceeded to create some of the goriest, bloodiest, and controversial films ever put to screen. And like Salo before them, these horrifically violent movies spoke spoke to something real about the human experience. So High Tension is another example of using extreme violence to explore power dynamics. The film is about Marie wanting to enforce her will on Alex and the guilt that causes a break in her psyche. Even if it's not intentional, these sadistic movies say a lot about how powerful people use violence to enforce their will on the marginalized. Exploitation movies exist because exploitation is an established part of the world we live in. Many people criticize these movies for blood, sex, misogyny, racism, but totally fail to address the culture that would make them. The financial incentives to provoke controversy, part of the population are always going to have sadistic natures, and as long as money is the driving force behind cinema, then these films will always be incentivized to revel in sadism. When American films get criticized for racism, they it's often totally ignored the inherent racism at the heart of American society. And in a way, it might even be a more truthful telling of the American experience. Personally, I adore movies that break taboos. Give me all the blood, sex, and mayhem you can dish out. Pushing taboos is what horror is all about, and that's why I love it. Sex is very much the villain of high tension, and more specifically, desire to engage in a non-traditional relationship. And yeah, early 2000s America was like that, unfortunately. Marie's masturbation literally conjures a psychotic murderer. It's not very subtle, though you miss it on your first viewing. So the dad gets killed by Mr. Killer, which wakes up Marie. The killer murders everyone in the house except for Alex and Marie. Marie finds Alex tied up, then abandons her to find a phone. The killer takes Alex and sticks her in a creepy van. So the killer goes back to the house while Marie sneaks around.
tries to get Alex out of the van. Fortunately, she gets herself trapped in the van as well, and that's the first half of the movie. Thank <laughs> you.